So now I would like to welcome our director, Marcelo Giugale, uh, director of financial advisory and banking department of the World Bank Treasury to the podium to deliver the closing remarks. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rodrigo. Um, I think you will agree that it's been a terrific two days, uh, very productive, lots of information. Um, these things don't happen out of the blue. A lot of colleagues put their time and effort to make it so successful. I do want to read out their names, if you give me one second, before I do the closing remarks per se. Uh, Amira Amat, Banu Turan, Era Anderson, Ria Genares, Koskun Chas Cangos, uh, Leonardo, Leandro Secunio, Rodrigo Cabral, Siden Aslan, Andrew Lee, Chris Di Chala, and the extended conference team. I know I didn't read all the names properly, but I urge you to give them a big round of applause. Uh, in terms of closing remarks, I promise I will not try to summarize uh, everything that was said in the last two days. Instead, I ask you to bear with me. I'm going to rehearse with you what I'm going to tell my wife tonight when we sit for dinner and she says, what have you been doing for the last two days, lock up with all those people? Um, and let me warn you that my wife is not an economist, does not care about economics, and never gives me more than three minutes of her attention. So I will try to do all this in three minutes, uh, and that means I will leave a lot of stuff out. And I will have to express myself the way I can make my wife keep that attention for three minutes. Uh, the first big message I get out of these two days is that the world economy is not about to enter a golden era. We are going to be lucky if we just cruise along, uh, but we do face a lot of risks. Uh, in fact, it's interesting, we don't find small risks, uh, a lot of small risks. We find a few big risks. It's like black swans are getting to be more normal. You know, a sudden change in the speed of normalization of monetary policy in the U.S., a breakout of a trade war between the big lions in global trade, um, a sudden explosion of subnational debt in Asia, uh, a geopolitical event that could very well derail confidence everywhere, uh, another event in Europe, uh, particularly in the Eurozone with one of my uh, countrymen uh, saying the wrong thing at the wrong time and making Italy less than sustainable. All these are black swans, low probability events, but they could very well derail the world economy. So that's the context. At the same time, we have a world uh, that is a highly indebted country. Those of you that came here 20 or more years ago, we remember uh, the hippie initiative when we have the highly indebted poor countries. Well, now we have a highly indebted world. Uh, of course, it all nets out, but before it nets out, a lot of pain can be felt if you don't manage that debt properly. Um, fortunately, I will tell my wife, there are very smart people doing very smart things to keep this debt from going uh, the wrong way. And that's you. Each of one of you, when you go back home Monday morning, will be, in a way, the troopers that will keep the world's debt in check. And we thank you for that, of course. Uh, what are the smart things that you are doing? Well, uh, a lot of old religion. You know, the conservative way of managing debt, making sure you don't have exposures on interest rates, on currency risks, credit risk, systems. Uh, all that is all religion and it's still very applicable. I mean, we should have faith in that, and you, of course, are doing it very well. At the same time, there is a push to make debt more transparent. Uh, this is not just about subnational debt, it's debt in general. Uh, it's a, there is a push about lifting up and highlighting contingent liabilities. Uh, I remember when Mexico started with this 20 years ago, among our clients, of course, uh, it was new. I mean, you know, why would you put that on the box and show it to the credit rating agencies? Now it's something that we all think should be done and should be done quickly. At the same time, you are uh, beginning to look, as you heard today, just a minute ago, uh, to look at your assets. Now, we need to be clear well, how do we define those assets uh, not all of them are repossessable, not all of them can be pledged, not all of them are liquid. But still, you know, those that are, 
we need to account for them when we show our net worth. And there is a lot of progress in that area. I hope our clients, middle income and low income countries, will quickly catch up with the higher income countries in terms of building their balance sheets more fully. Um, I touched upon yesterday also on currency conversions, uh, particularly for loans by multilaterals. For most advanced countries, this is everyday work. You don't take exposure in foreign currency. A lot of push we heard to go local currency uh, and only local currency if possible. But for the rest of the world, currency risk is still a risk and we need to do something about it. Uh, and finally, we heard a lot about thematic bonds. This idea that there are investors, a growing legion of investors that cares about impact, whether it's environmental impact, social impact, governance impact, and they have a lot of money. So soon enough, the investor base will have to be catered for and we will have to thematize the bonds that we issue. So all those things require uh, a lot of technical expertise, which you obviously have. I mean, we heard uh, your presentations for two days. At the same time, you cannot do it alone. We heard that you need the support of your political leaders, that any of these decisions taken above our pay grade could derail any good technical solution. So the constant education of public, and then from public to leaders, remains constant. Uh, remains valid. We need to be there. Uh, we need to speak out and communicate why we do what we do. Finally, I want to say in this process of bringing new technologies to the old religion to cater for the new risks, uh, you can count on the World Bank. And in particular, you can count on the World Bank Treasury. Uh, whatever experience we have that you think is useful to you is yours. Uh, we are a non-profit, if you want to call it. We are happy to share what we know. Uh, and we are happy to learn from you and pass it on to others. If there is a role for this department, is to be a connector, a clearinghouse, a constant forum of uh, experiences and expertise and lessons from the day-to-day -day operation. So let me say thank you very much. Uh, regrettably, this conference is biannual, so we'll only see you in 2020. Uh, but in between, our door is open. We do webinars all the time. We do workshops all the time. We do gatherings all the time. You are all invited all the time. So thank you all and have safe travels back home.